In this lab, we're going to do some network security exercises using various tools that we can use to, uh, to look at some things in our network. Um, so our first step, we, some prerequisites here. First, I, I have two machines running, right? So on the top, you can see my, uh, that's my machine from week five, right? So I just used my machine from week five and I'm continuing with that machine. You don't have to take another snapshot this week. Um, or if you have a snapshot from last week or the week before, you can use that snapshot to build a new machine for this week. Uh, whatever you prefer, but we just need a machine that leaves off from week four. So it, it has to be from the end of week four. You don't necessarily need the machine from week five. On the bottom, I have the uh, client that we built. So if you recall, I think it was in practical assignment five or two, rather, we built a uh, client machine. So that's what I'm running at the bottom. We need a client and a server to test some stuff here with our network. So the first thing we're going to do is on the bottom, we're going to install a utility called Nmap. So Nmap is, oh, sorry, I forgot the install command. So Nmap is a network utility. Uh, it is basically going to allow us to probe uh, uh, a host to see what services are open on that server and maybe even see some other things on that server. Now, before we do this, right, so before we run that command from the server, we are going to uh, make some changes with our firewall. So we first want to check and see if our services are running, uh, you know, and that they're listening. So Netstat is a good way to do that. Uh, you can pass some options. If you just run Netstat, it's going to give you a whole bunch of junk, right? So we want to limit that down a little bit. We're going to use uh, the dash T U L P. Uh, I think there's one other option. Yeah, we'll need option N. So the, these are all just options on the Netstat command. And when you run that, it gives you a little bit more information. If you just want to see. Uh, just going to limit this, by the way, it is uh, case sensitive, right? So I want to show only the ones that are currently in a listen state, right? So that shows me that SSHD is listening, uh, SLAPD, which if you recall is the uh, LDAP server, VSFTP is running, um, uh, SSHD is in here twice, I guess. Uh, oh yeah, it's in here because of the IPv6, right? So you see everything listed again for, uh, for IPv6. Um, there's no web server running, right? Because we, we ran Python to do that. We did do that in the command line. So you want to verify that those services are running. And the next step before we run our little test with Nmap is we want to make sure um, we're going to we're going to set up our firewall to be completely permissive, right? So the command first, we're going to make sure the firewall is running, right? So systemctl status firewall D, make sure your firewall is active or running. If it's not, you're going to want to uh, start it, right? Start and enable it. Once you verify that, we're going to take a look with the firewall CMD commands. We're going to uh, get our default zone, right? So my zone right now is set to trusted, but for this lab, we're going to set it to, because trusted allows pretty much all traffic, right? But we want to block all traffic for this lab uh, just to kind of try some stuff here. So I'm going to set my default zone to public because the public by default blocks pretty much everything, right? Now, in some of the previous labs, we um, we added some services, right? So you can see here mine, if I run the, the list all command, now that I'm running in my, my public zone, right? So this is the public zones rules, right? You can see that the HTTPv6 client, FTP, HTTP, LDAP, SSH, and port 8000 TCP are all open, right? They're all listed there in that fourth or fifth line down. So I want to get rid of all that stuff, right? Uh, we want to turn all that stuff off. So we're going to do firewall CMD. Uh, we are going to um, remove port 8000 TCP. Make sure you use the, uh, the permanent option. Otherwise it won't stay on there. When we reload the firewall, it'll all come back, right? Um, oh, do I have the wrong? Let's see, remove port 8000 TCP permanent. That's strange, it says it's not uh, not enabled right now. It looks like it is enabled. Well, if you get that error, don't worry about it. It looks like it works anyway. Um, so we also wanna remove a service. And we wanna remove LDAP. And then I wanna remove HTTP and FTP because I saw that in my list and assuming I didn't miss any we could take a look um, 
FTP, HTTP, LDAP. Yep, those should all be gone now. Um, let's do a reload. There we go. So after I reload, you can see those services are now gone, right? Um, so make sure you do a reload and then do a list all just like I did. And you should see that everything's gone. So that means that pretty much nothing's going to be allowed except for DHCP v6 and SSH. Obviously, we want to leave SSH on or else we'll lose the ability to connect to our server, right? So we got to make sure that that's enabled. So on the bottom, I'm now going to run the nmap command and we're going to see what we get back, right? So uh, with the nmap command, you are going to pass a... Um, the options SV is going to not only probe ports, but it's also going to try to discern what those services are that are running. And then I'm going to put in the IP address of the machine. So you'll obviously want to use the IP address of your machine here, right? Not mine. It won't work with mine because it's, you know, mine's behind the, the Google firewall. So I run that command. Let's see what we get. So it's probing all those ports, lots of ports, right? Um, so it, it found one thing open, right? It found port 22 TCP open, which it knows is SSH. And it was actually able to figure out that it's running open SSH version 7.4 and protocol version 2.0, right? So it gives me some interesting information, right? It knows exactly what package it's using uh, and what version it's on, right? Um, now let's turn off our firewall and run that same command again. So we'll do uh, just the easy way to turn it off is just use system CTL. And we'll just do a stop. And we'll make sure we start this back up when we're done, right? We don't want to run our machines without a firewall, right? So now with the firewall off, and I run this command again. Just got to wait for it. It's probing all those ports. All right, this time it found VSFTP302. It found open SSH, it found open LDAP, right? It's giving me the versions on all this stuff, right? Um, so let's do this uh, one more thing here. I'm gonna start the Python uh, little web server, right? Now, before I do that, I'm gonna run the uh, PWD command and make sure that I'm in my home directory, right? So I'm in home student. And if I look in that directory, you can see I have a file here called index.html. That is the file that we created in an earlier practical assignment. If you look at the contents of that file, it should be a very simple web page, right? It doesn't really matter what's in the web page, right? Just some HTML code. It doesn't really matter. Um, so just make sure you have that there, right? That you've got that index.html in that location. And then we're going to use the Python command with dash M. It's a simple, actually, I'm trying to remember what the command was. It was simple HTTP server, I think. Let me just look at my notes here. Yep, so it's, uh, I, I knew I was missing something. It's a capital S. Uh, Python is um, case sensitive. So simple HTTP server, and we wanna run it on port 8000. Now before you hit enter, make sure you put an ampersand on here. So watch what happens when I use the ampersand. It's gonna run it in the background, right? So now it's running in the background. If I wanna see you know that that's running in the background. You can use the jobs command. You'll see that it's running in the background, right? So it's going to sit there in the background until I move back to the foreground and I kill it. Um, so now that that's running, I got my little web server running in the background in my user space. Um, I can come down here and we can run that nmap command again, right? And now we should see it pick up our, our simple Python web server. Let's see if it finds it and if it can tell us uh, exactly what web server it is. Now you can see right there, it did find it. And now notice what happened is look at the top. Python actually, even though it's running as a background process, the logging from Python still pops up in the foreground, right? Um, so it still pops up those messages every once in a while. Um, but you can see that somebody did an HTTP GET, right? Somebody ran the GET command on, on the root of the web server using version 1.0 and it, and it sent back a 200 response, right? Well, that happened right when I ran nmap. So, so what nmap did, nmap found that service running and it actually sent, it, it detected it that it was a web server and it, uh, and it tried to get a web page from it to see what it got back, right? And now look at the bottom, you can see that it reports in my client where I ran nmap, it, it not only found an open web server, right? That it, it not only identified, even though I used a different port number, right? So this is running on port 8,000, but it figured out that it's uh, that it's running HTTP, it and it also figured out exactly what web server it is. That it's simple HTTP server 
uh, 0.6 and it's uh, Python 2.7.5, right? Um, so now I know what version Python's running on the server, right? And uh, and we can actually uh, from the client. Let's do this real quick. We're going to use Telnet to connect to that port. So 128.0.6 is my server, port 8000. And when I connect to it, I don't really see much yet, right? But if I do get root um, HTTP forward slash 1.1, and then just put anything for the host, it doesn't really matter. It's not really used by Python. Um, and then we get some stuff that comes back. But if I scroll up here and look at the full header, um, take a look at this, right? The server, right? It gives me some information there. So, you know, where do you think Nmap is getting that information from, right? Um, and one of the interesting things is sometimes Nmap will figure out what type of web server it is without even having to get it from here, right? Um, so you could set up your services so it doesn't expose in the banner, right? They call these banners, right? When it, when it, when it gives you all kinds of information in the response to that service, um, it's a banner, but you can turn off that banner with a lot of services. In Apache, for example, you can disable the banner. In VSFTP, you can disable the banner. So none of that stuff pops up, right? And I can show you that, in fact, VSFTP on this server probably is giving us a banner, right? If I connect to port 20, which is, uh, which is uh, VSFTP, or maybe it was 21? Yeah, there you go, port 21. Uh, for FTP, uh, notice it tells me right there, VSFTPD version 302, right? So it tells you right in the uh, in the response. Um, and by the way, if you try that, you can just use quit to, to get out of it. There's really no other way to disconnect. You have to use quit. Um, but that's it, right? So we, we got a lot of interesting information by using Nmap, and you can kind of see how that works. So for our next trick, we're gonna use TCP dump utility, but this utility we're gonna run from the server instead of the client. You could theoretically run it on either the server or the client TCP dump. It'll work on both and give you the same information, um, but it's a little bit easier to run it on the server because it's a uh, predictable port number. Um, so we don't have to do as many tricks to get it to work. So we're gonna use the yum command to install TCP dump. That should go out and get that package for us. All right, I'm going to go ahead and install it. All right, we've got it now. Okay, so now that I have the TCP dump utility, I'm going to run it. So I'm going to run TCP dump. By the way, if I run the jobs command, I still have Python running in the background with my little web server. If it's not running in the background, make sure you start it uh, so that you have that running in the background. Um, so I'm going to run TCP dump. You have to give it some options here. So we're going to pass the dash n option. I'll, I'll show you why I'm going to do that, right? So if I just pat, if I just run TCP dump, it's just going to start showing me everything that's happening. We use control C to stop it, um, right? I, I, that's a lot of chatter. I don't want to see everything that's, so that's basically every TCP segment that, and remember, so TCP dump is dumping segments, right? It's not a packet sniffer. It's not a, um, you know, it's not looking at the frames, it's looking at the segment level, right? And segments really where there's a lot of interesting information. Um, there's certainly other in interesting information in the uh, in the other the other headers, but we're gonna take a look at TCP. Um, but th there's a lot of chatter in there as well because of the uh, because of the host name, right? It's it's got that full host name on there. Um, you could see all my SSH traffic, right? Because that there it has my uh, my Comcast IP address as the client connecting to the server, which is CIS two eighty five week five dot US dot dash central whatever whatever whatever. That's all the uh, the Google stuff, right? Um, but to keep it from doing that, I'm gonna use the dash n command. That's gonna keep it from giving me the fully qualified domain name. It's gonna make it a little less chatty the output. But also, I want to limit it to port eight thousand. Um, so we're gonna use the port command. Because that's my my Python server is listening on port 8000, so I'm only going to look at the capture on port 8000. So then, if I come down here and I try to connect to that web server again on port 8000, um, and I'll just use the get command again, right? Nice and simple. HTTP 1.1 host is foo, and you can see each time I hit enter, right? Each time I did something it output the segment information up here, right? So you can see this is actually showing us the header, right? So think back to the lecture. I, I you know, actually in two lectures, I talk about the segment header, right? I talk about it in, I think it was in week two, maybe week three, I can't remember. 
where we talk about the, what a TCP segment looks like. You got the IP or the port number. You've got all the flags, right? And notice here it shows us what these flags are. You have the SYN flags that could be set. You've got the um, P flag. I forget what that is, right? The dot is just a uh, data flag, right? So it's passing data back and forth. You can see the sequence number, the acknowledgement number, right? It actually shows you the sequence and acknowledgement numbers. Um, you can see the window size. You know, it's saying this is how much data you can send me, right? Before I'm going to explode, right? Um, so a lot of cool stuff in here, right? That you can see. Um, but we could take this a step further. I'm going to hit Control C to break out of TCP dump, and I'm going to add the dash capital X command and take a look at what's a little bit different now when I add the dash X. Right now, it's going to get a little bit more more interesting. So I'm going to pass in uh, just the get command again. So get HTTP 1.1 host is foo. All right. And if I go back up here, notice now it's actually dumping the payload, right? So it's actually dumping the TCP segment uh, payload, the actual data that's being passed up to the application level, right? It's given it to us two ways. It's, it's showing us the hexadecimal equivalent, right? So it's, uh, you know, the actual binary data, right? So this is the ones and the zeros um, just converted to, to hexadecimal. And then over here on the right, you can see the actual ASCII characters, right? Some of these where you see a dot, it's not a displayable ASCII, I'm sorry, um, not a displayable ASCII character. It, that could be a space, it could be a tab, it could be uh, the enter key was hit or the carriage return line feed, you know, all that kind of stuff. Even the the bell and things like that, right? All the, all the weird stuff that doesn't really output a character. Um, and then you have like all the actual characters that you can see in here, right? Um, so kind of neat. You can actually see the TCP header. Um, so that's it. That's all I'm going to ask you to do. Oops, I meant to hit Control C there. That's all I'm going to ask you to do. Now, when you're done, you want to make sure we kind of unwind a little bit of this. So first thing is we want to kill uh, that little that little web server that's running. So oops, I didn't mean to type F. It's FG, not FB. So that's going to bring back uh, FG is foreground. It's going to bring back that background application to the foreground. I'm going to hit Control C to kill it. And then I'm also going to use the uh, system CTL command to start my uh, my firewall again, right? I don't want to leave that firewall off, obviously, especially if I'm going to leave this machine running. I want to make sure that the firewall is on. And that's it. So that's the lab for this week. If you have any questions, let me know.